All right, back in the kitchen today, a little smoky outside, so I thought I'd take an opportunity to talk about the lay knives and the knives that I most commonly use when processing fish. As you guys know, I do a lot of fishing, so I also spend an inordinate amount of time processing fish, and I've selected a variety of knives that are perfectly suited to the different types of fish that I like to process. And so today I thought I'd go over those knives as well as some of the maintenance tools that I use to maintain my knives and some of the features I look for in these knives as well, as well as some other tools I use when processing fish. So let's get started on my top fillet knives. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. The first one is just going to be my Mr. Twister Electric Fisherman. This is a $30 AC powered electric fillet knife. This one comes standard with their nine inch serrated standard blade. These blades are interchangeable. You can get seven inch blades um, and you can also get what they call their flex blades, which are basically half the width of these, but they rotate against each other like that. Those serrations do and create the cutting edge. These are excellent for quickly processing uh, like spiny rays, like yellow perch and things like that when I'm doing my ice fishing. And then you can just lock them back in here by sliding them back into the uh, knife and it locks back in there and there's the trigger once you plug it in. Like I said, it's only 30 bucks. I've literally processed thousands of yellow perch very quickly using it. It does a great job of giving me clean cuts on those firmer, smaller white meat fish like perch, eater walleye, crappie and things like that and really saves my hands when I'm processing you know, 50 fish or more. And at a $30 price point, it's really hard to complain. It comes with a two year warranty. I've had this one well over two years and it just keeps on going. Okay, so the next knife on my list is the Columbia River Knife and Tool Big Eddy Blade. Now, I like this one because of a couple reasons. Um, it's gonna set it apart from the rest of the knives I'm gonna talk about here. It is a six and three quarter inch blade. It has a partially ser serrated edge down here near the base of the blade. It has a very grippy and rubbery handle so when your hands are wet, it does a good job of allowing you to maintain grip on it. It has a very fine point as opposed to some of the other fillet knives that I've seen out on the market, which I really like this knife for working rib bones away uh, from flesh. So this works really good in clearing those rib bones out on salmon, trout, um, walleye, all those other species that I end up uh, de-ribbing. So I really like that. It also has a hollow ground edge, unlike all the other knives I'm gonna talk about from this point forward. What is a hollow ground edge? Essentially means that rather than having a straight edge on both sides, it is concave. And what that allows the blade to do is to slide a little bit easier along flesh um, and under skin. And I think that's why this uh, blade does such an exceptional job at removing rib bones cleanly. It's also great for filleting smaller fish. What I don't like about it is that it's a fairly stiff blade compared to the rest of the fillets knives that I use. It's very affordable, it's $29. Um, you can even find it cheaper at retailers. Uh, but it's a great uh, blade and I really like it. Okay, so the next three knives are gonna be Victoronix Fibrox series knives. These are among my favorite knives uh, for processing meat, whether that be fish or game. This is their six inch boning knife. These Fibrox knives all have these really grippy plastic handles that are super durable. You don't have to worry about beating them up. You can take them on the road with you, throw them in the boat, whatever you wanna do. They last for a really long time. I like Victoronics. They're extremely sharp steel. It's affordable. This one retails for $35. This is what I feel like is my perfect knife for uh, filleting smaller fish like trout and kokanee. I'm usually grabbing this knife right here. Now the Victoronics knives use an 18 degree angle along the blade edge. That's very good at cutting um, flesh and removing flesh from fish and for skinning. 
Uh, so I find that they do very well uh, just at the factory angle, but I actually end up reshaping these to a different uh, angle to make them even more sharp. But this is the six inch boning knife. I also use the eight inch fillet knife from the same company, same series, Fibrox. It's very flexible blade. Uh, I really like this size blade for processing the bulk of my medium sized fish. That might be something like coho salmon, smaller king salmon, walleye, and things of that nature. But one of the things that I struggle with with this blade is it just doesn't have the weight to cut through some of those thicker uh, skinned fish, uh, those bigger boned fish. This blade really hangs up on the bones just because it doesn't have that uh, cutting weight to it. It can't break through the bone. So it's so really good for, you know, fish like salmon, which is the bulk of, of what I am processing with this knife. Um, it goes through them no problem, but say if I'm trying to cut through a big lean cod, I'm going to hang up on it and uh, I need a different knife. This one retails for just a dollar more than their boning knife. And uh, so that's 36 bucks for this model here. Again, 18 degree angle, which I reshape. And the final one that uh, I have in my kit is also a Victronix uh, Fibrox knife. This is their 10 inch scimitar knife. And the scimitar blade comes with what's called a Granton edge. That's these little dimples that are spread all along the knife edge on both sides. And what these do is it allows a little bit of air to get in there and allows uh, the knife to slide a little bit easier when there's a lot of pressure being put on the blade from meat or from your hands pressing down on the fish while you're holding it. And this is typically a problem with larger fish when I'm processing larger fish. Another thing is, is this is a much more substantial blade opposed to the fillet knife. You can see it's much thicker. That gives it that backbone to break through bones. It is a little bit stiffer. It's in fact, it's a lot stiffer. Uh, and that allows me to really push through those tough to cut bones, like say on a big lean cod. I also use this a lot for tuna um, and other big offshore species. And I've used this uh, on occasion with really big kings as well. So that is the 10 inch scimitar blade with the Granton edge. I think those retail for right around $60. They do have one without the Granton edge, but I really recommend getting that. So a couple other tools I use is a descaler. This is a very inexpensive descaler. You just run this along salmon, these little, and your trout, and this uh, little device, these little plastic beads will rip the scales away without damaging the flesh underneath. And it has a little scraper blade on the end to help scrape and clean away the scales. What I like about this most is that the, the scales get trapped inside here rather than getting flung all over uh, the cleaning area, especially if you're in the kitchen and doing this work. Uh, you're not gonna make the significant other too happy if you're just flinging scales all over the kitchen. This traps them very, very well. Additionally, it's always really good to have a piece of honing steel uh, ready. Um, as you hit bones and things like that with these fillet knives, you are going to create minute uh, nicks and dents in the blade edge itself. And you can clean those up really quickly with a honing bar. So finally, I wanted to talk about how I sharpen my blades and I actually reshape my blades, especially the straight edge blades. Um, I've tried Japanese uh, ceramic stones and they work very well, but I found them to be very tedious and consumed a lot of my time. And it's just not something I have a lot of. So I ended up going with the Chef's Choice uh, Model 15XV three stage tricore sharpener. And what this does is it actually changes the blade uh, edge angle and reshapes it to a 15 degree angle, uh, which is the standard and preferred angle in Japanese knife making. So all of those Victorinix knives come with an 18 inch edge, uh, which is a very good cutting edge, but this actually takes it one step further and reshapes it in the first stage to a 15 degree angle 
you then hone it in the second stage and then you put a fine cutting edge on it in the third stage. Now during the initial reshapening phase, like the first time you take and reshape your blade um, in stage one, um, you have to make many passes. So with the thin knives like the boning knives and fillet knives, I had to do something like 30 passes on each side uh, to create the bevel on each side of the blade and reshape it to 15 degrees. Whereas when I did this with my scimitar blade, um, because it's a substantially thicker blade, I ended up having to do something like 60 passes on both sides to create the burr that they're looking for as you reshape the blade edge. Now, these knives are actually much sharper uh, coming out of this than they were when I first bought them because I have a much finer cutting edge. At the same time, that cutting edge is a little bit more vulnerable to damage. So I have to do a little more work to maintain it, but it's very easy to do. Once you have that established 15 degree edge, you can just come back through here, hone and sharpen in a few passes each time and you're good to go. Uh, so I've been really impressed with this uh, little device. It uses uh, diamond dust wheels, grinding wheels on the inside there. Uh, so it's not using ceramic or steel or anything. It, it's got a diamond edge stones on each stage and it does a remarkably good job. I even use it on my heavier kitchen knives as well. Well, that does it for my knife overview for filleting fish. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what knives you are using and why you love that knife so much, or maybe even why you don't like it. I'll put links to all of these knives below so you can do your own research on them. And hopefully I'll see you next time out on the water or in the kitchen. And just remember, cut smarter, not harder. Bye guys.